Guys, China has just flown its first ever reusable rocket, and it was a success. Well, mostly. The launch went up without a hitch, but the landing was a bit rocky. Here's why. On December 3, 2025, at 12 p.m. UTC plus 8, Landspace's Jukui 3 Y1 rocket lifted off from the Dongfeng Commercial Space Innovation Pilot Zone and successfully reached its intended orbit. The second stage made it to the planned orbit without issue, but things didn't go as smoothly for the first stage. An abnormal combustion event during the landing burn kept it from touching down softly on the recovery pad. Even though there isn't much full-sequence footage of the launch and recovery attempt, Landspace did share the official mission profile for both the orbital flight and the first stage recovery test after the launch. According to the timeline, the rocket lifted off and, at about T plus 129 seconds, the first stage engines throttled down and shut off cleanly. Just a few seconds later, at T plus 134 seconds, the first and second stages separated. By T plus 138 seconds, the second stage had ignited for its first burn, pushing the vehicle toward orbit. As the rocket climbed out of the thickest part of the atmosphere, the payload fairing separated at T plus 324 seconds, exposing the spacecraft to space. The second stage finished its first burn at T plus 499 seconds with SECO-1, achieving initial orbit. After a long coast phase of nearly 30 minutes, the second stage restarted at T plus 1,899 seconds for a short circularization burn, then shut down again at T plus 1,916 seconds, completing SECO-2. A terminal velocity correction maneuver wrapped up at T plus 1,980 seconds, and passivation procedures began at T plus 2,010 seconds, finishing by T plus 3,025 seconds, placing the upper stage in its final safe configuration. Meanwhile, right after stage separation at T plus 134 seconds, the first stage flipped around to begin its return sequence. The first stage began its return to Earth, targeting a landing pad in Minchin County, administered by the city of Wuwei in Gansu Province. Just before re-entering the atmosphere, it executed a roughly 46-second burn to shield the stage from intense re-entry heating and set up a controlled descent. Nearly a minute later, the landing burn initiated, but an anomaly followed soon after, causing the booster to undergo a partial, rapid, unscheduled disassembly before impacting the ground at high speed. Even though the booster didn't make it back for a soft landing, it crashed down pretty close to the target. If everything had gone as intended, the booster would have settled onto the landing zone at about T plus 510 seconds, touching down softly as the center engine shut off. The Jukui 3 is Landspace's new generation launch vehicle, designed to be low cost, high capacity, high frequency, and fully reusable. It uses liquid oxygen and methane for propulsion and is built specifically to support large satellite constellation missions. The Y1 version uses a two-stage, single-core design, with both stages measuring 4.5 meters in diameter, a payload fairing 5.2 meters across, and a total height of 66.1 meters. At liftoff, it weighs about 560 tons and produces around 7,542 kilonewtons of thrust. Its engines come from Landspace's own Tianque family of methane engines, with nine engines powering the first stage and a single vacuum-optimized engine on the second stage. After the two stages separate, the first stage is intended to return and land vertically, with a planned reuse capability of at least 20 flights. Once fully operational, Jukui 3 is expected to deliver at least 18 tons to low Earth orbit while still recovering the first stage downrange. This makes it well-suited for deploying large batches of satellites for internet constellations and China's future space infrastructure. According to Landspace, the rocket is meant to provide a high-payload, low-cost, reusable option to meet the rising demand for mega-constellation launches. Although this mission didn't achieve its planned first-stage recovery, it's worth noting that no reusable rocket has nailed a landing on its very first flight. A good comparison is Blue Origin's New Glenn, which also needed until its second launch to successfully land its booster. And in this case, Jukui-3's booster still came down extremely close to the target, which is a major step forward on the road to full reusability. A few hours after the launch, Landspace announced that Zuche-3's first flight was a complete success. They said the mission confirmed the choices they made during development and showed off several big technological leaps. 
They explained that this was the first time China had flown a reusable liquid oxygen methane rocket that wasn't based on an older design, but built from the ground up. The rocket brings together a lot of difficult engineering, propulsion, aerodynamics, flight control, structural design, and makes them work together smoothly. One of the interesting things about the first stage is the unusual layout. The fuel tank is on top of the oxygen tank, and the outside of the booster carries these symmetrical winglets, P-shaped grid fins, and slim landing leg covers. All of this helps the rocket use less propellant on the way back down, which means it can carry more on the way up. It's also the first time in China that a nine-engine methane oxygen cluster has actually flown. Getting nine engines to work together like this requires a propellant system that can deliver huge amounts of super cold fuel without hiccups, tolerate multiple restarts, and adjust thrust deeply across a complicated mission. They even solved the tricky problem of methane freezing during fully supercooled fueling. Thanks to that, they can load the rocket with super cold propellant up to two hours before liftoff. Another big step was in how they built the rocket's stainless steel tanks. Landspace developed its own high-strength steel, along with new laser welding techniques and the equipment to make it all work. Using this method instead of aluminum cuts the cost of making these large, thin-walled tanks by about 80% and shortens production by nearly half. The flight also tested China's most precise re-entry navigation and control tech yet for a reusable orbital booster. The rocket managed to keep a stable attitude, adjust its path on the fly, and stay under control even as conditions changed rapidly and unpredictably. Landspace also highlighted a new avionics design, basically the rocket's nervous system. Instead of the older, slower communication systems rockets normally use, Zuche 3 has a high-speed, redundant distributed setup built around fast, real-time Ethernet. Data can move at over 100 megabits per second, which is about 100 times faster than the old 1553B standard. They also borrowed concepts from the automotive world to build a much more powerful onboard computer for the return and landing phase. Altogether, it's a big step forward in blending modern electronics and advanced manufacturing with rocket design. Looking ahead, Landspace says this first flight gave them a ton of data to review, especially about the booster's landing attempt. They'll use that information to refine both hardware and software on the next vehicles. Several Zuche 3 rockets are already on the production line at their manufacturing site in Jiaxing in Zhejiang province. With the debut flight behind them, Landspace is feeling confident. They believe Zuche 3 will let them offer low-cost, frequent, large-scale launches for China's growing mega-constellations, starting in 2026. Landspace is one of several Chinese rocket startups coming of age, and it has ambitions to match. In a 2023 interview with Chinese state media, founder and CEO Zhang Changwu acknowledged that China's commercial rocket sector still lags behind SpaceX, but said that if Landspace stays on the right development direction, it could one day be able to match SpaceX's capabilities. Zhang also said last year that beginning in 2026, the company expects to carry out spacecraft launch missions for China's Tiangong space station. That would mark the first time a commercial launcher supports national space station operations, making a reusable system even more essential. The company has already notched major milestones. In 2023, Landspace achieved the world's first successful orbital launch of a methane liquid oxygen rocket with its JUK-2 beating global competitors pursuing what's viewed as a cleaner-burning, more efficient propellant. SpaceX's Starship also runs on methane, though it has only conducted suborbital test flights so far. Landspace's rapid progress has drawn attention at home and abroad. Elon Musk has commented on preparations for the company's next-generation JUK-3 rocket, posting on X in October that Landspace had added aspects of Starship to a Falcon 9 architecture, which would enable it to beat Falcon 9. Still, he predicted it would take over five years for the firm to reach Falcon 9's reliability and production cadence. By then, Musk said, SpaceX will have transitioned to Starship and be doing over 100 times the annual payload to orbit of Falcon. Starship, the most powerful rocket ever built, remains under development, but is designed to be fully reusable, including recovery of its upper stage, 
something no launch provider has achieved before. Landspace didn't manage to land China's first booster on its initial try, but for China, this is just the beginning, and the next attempt could come very soon. Landspace is one of several Chinese companies now working on reusable rocket technology. On the launch pads, there's also the state-owned Long March 12A, developed by the Shanghai Academy of Spaceflight Technology under the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation. It can lift about 12 tons to low Earth orbit. The rocket stands around 69 meters tall and 3.8 meters in diameter, making it just a little shorter and a little wider than a Falcon 9. Like Zuche 3, it uses methane and oxygen on both stages. The Long March 12A is derived from the older, kerosene-fueled Long March 12, but it's been upgraded to run on methane and designed with reuse in mind. Another contender is the Tianlong 3 from private aerospace firm Space Pioneer. It's designed to be reusable too, though its first flight isn't expected to attempt a landing. Tianlong-3 is a medium-lift rocket built for low-cost, partially reusable access to space. Its first stage is designed for autonomous vertical landings and can be reused up to 10 times, positioning it as a serious player in China's growing commercial launch market. The rocket can carry medium-class payloads to low Earth orbit or sun-synchronous orbit. The first stage is powered by nine Tianhuo-12 TH-12 Carolox engines each producing 1,350 kilonewtons of thrust in vacuum, 335 seconds specific impulse, and 1,090 kilonewtons at sea level, 285 seconds specific impulse. The engines can throttle between 40 and 110 percent, use a gas generator cycle, and gimbal for steering. Its 3.8 meter diameter propellant tanks have a triangular grid-stiffened structure similar to the Tianlong-2 first stage. The second stage uses a single vacuum-optimized TH-12 volt engine. Tianlong-3's standard payload fairing measures 4.2 meters across and 12 meters tall, enough for spacecraft up to 3.8 meters in diameter and 10 meters tall, though a larger 5.2 by 14 meter fairing is available for bigger payloads. The race to launch China's first fully reusable rocket is heating up. Successfully reaching orbit and landing a booster would make China only the second country after the United States to pull off this feat with an orbital-class rocket, and it would be a huge milestone. Commercial companies, backed by Beijing, are becoming an increasingly important part of China's space innovation, following a model that's worked well in the U.S. This growth comes as President Xi Jinping has, in recent years, highlighted aerospace as a strategic emerging industry. China's next five-year plan is expected to focus on turning the country into a strong aerospace nation. So buckle up. Pretty soon, we're going to see a lot of rockets not just going up, but coming back down again, too.